Why is the low time to kill better than high TTK? Ever since DICE released the TTK update, along with the January patch in January obviously, as it is called the January patch, community got divided into two groups. The one that hates TTK changes and the other one that simply loves them. And as I'm in the second group myself, I'll try to explain it, why I think that the low TDK is a lot better than the high one that we previously had in the game. If you somehow missed the past couple of months and don't know what the TDK update is, basically DICE increased damage on all support weapons and assault weapons so that they kill in 4 shots instead of 5 shots as they used to do before the update. Self-loading rifles for the medic class didn't get their damages increased, but they got buffed in the accuracy section and now because of that, they also kill faster because you can shoot the weapons faster and still remain accurate. Now due to all of those changes, time required to kill the enemy got significantly lower, at least if you compare it to the previous state of Battlefield 1, maybe not necessarily to the other game, even in the franchise, and the game feels a lot different from a gameplay standpoint. Now, to properly understand all of the things further in this video, we have to be on the same page and that means we all have to ignore some of the facts. First of them being, how do you actually calculate time to kill? Many players seem to think that TDK is a simple statistic and if DICE shifted it from 5 bullets to kill to now 4 bullets to kill, it's simple. And what's even more absurd is that they keep comparing those statistics, those straight 4 bullets to kill without any other things, they keep comparing this to the previous Battlefield games. And they say that TDK is fine. Well, the whole subject is a lot more complicated than you think. First of all, you cannot simply compare bullets to kill between Battlefield titles, especially if you compare Battlefield 1 to Battlefield 4 or Battlefield 3, or even Hardline, you just cannot do that. Why? Because on average, the rate of fire of weapons in Battlefield 1 is significantly lower than in the previous games. Except for some weapons such as Autonubico or Machine and Pistol, the weapons on average have lower rate of fire, and that means that TDK will be higher because even though that they have the same damage as in the previous game, whichever game you choose to compare it to, they still fire at the lower rate of fire and that means it will take you longer to take someone out. And you might be surprised now, but that's not all. You have to also take into the consideration other factors, such as recoils, spreads, suppression and the amount of it and how it affects your weapon, all of this combined together is the actual TDK. Lately I've seen some posts on Reddit comparing Battlefield 1's TDK to the Battlefield 3's TDK, and the guy was basically like, alright in Battlefield 3 it took you 5 bullets to kill someone on that distance, and in Battlefield 1 it takes you only 4 bullets on the exact same distance. And he was completely wrong with his statement, because he didn't acknowledge the fact that in Battlefield 3, spread and recalls were different. And because of that, if you were good at the game and you had high accuracy, you could manage your weapon perfectly, you were able to pretty much instantly take someone out because all of your bullets were hitting the opponent. And in Battlefield 1, you cannot simply do that. You cannot go for micro-bursting in Battlefield 1 because it doesn't work. You can see me in this gameplay. I'm shooting almost full auto all the time because it doesn't make sense to do anything else. That's just how the gunplay in this game is designed and that's the most effective way to play this game. Now here is the thing. Getting into the actual topic of this video, and that being why the low TTK is better than the high one, now you can see what I'm trying to point out here. Before the TDK update, the TDK was even higher than it is now, and now, currently, it is still high. Because of all the recoils, spreads, rate of fires, and all of the other factors combined together. 
I'm willing to bet that 99% of the players don't take those things into the consideration while comparing time to kill. And it's fine, that's why I'm making this video. So that everyone can at least understand what this whole thing is actually about. Now why do I think that the new TTK is a lot better than the old one? First off, with the new TTK you actually have to play a lot smarter and position yourself a lot better if you want to be successful. Notice, I'm not necessarily saying that you have to play more defensively, because you don't. But you always have to position yourself in a way that won't leave you exposed to the enemy, because now you will die a lot faster. Before the update went live, you were pretty much able to stay exposed to the enemies and when they started shooting you, you could just hide. There was no risk because it took them so long to actually kill you that you had time to react. And now you don't always have this time. Because if the opponent that's shooting you actually knows what he's doing and can manage his weapon properly, he will be able to take you out almost instantly, at least from your perspective. The second thing, my personal favorite, is that a single player has a lot more impact now. Before the update, if you came across a couple of enemies, let's say 1v3, you are alone and come across 3 enemies. And what do you do? Well, before the update, it was significantly harder to actually take all of them out, before they took you out because of the high TDK. And I know what you might be thinking right now. If the TDK was high, then it was also high for you, meaning you could take more bullets before they took you out. And I can't really explain how this works, but in such situations, low TDK always benefits the player who's alone. I assume that's because if someone is about to take out 3 enemies on their own, at once, they usually have better accuracy, they are faster than the opponents, they have better snapping between targets, and can lead shots better. They just generally are better players. And usually such guy has also an element of surprise, which is quite a big thing in Battlefield actually. And talking about surprises... Flanking is also a lot more effective with lower TDK. It's just a lot easier to take out a group of enemies before they realize that there is someone behind them or on their side shooting them and taking out their teammates. Now by no means, I'm not claiming that before the TTK update flanking was completely irrelevant and it wasn't worth to go for the flanks. I'm not saying this. I know you could effectively flank enemies, surprise them and take them out, but after the TK update it's just easier and even more effective. You might not believe me on this one, but shift with TTK also affected explosives. And now you might be thinking, how did it affect explosives? Those didn't get either nerfed or buffed or changed in any way. They didn't. At least not directly. But if you get a wider perspective, before the update, it took a lot longer to take someone out with your primary weapon. So, in every single situation where you had the grenade and actually had the chance to utilize it, you would choose to throw a grenade at the enemy instead of shooting them because it was always a faster way to deal more damage. Now again, I'm not saying that the TTK update reduced the amount of explosive spam in the game. It didn't. We still have idiots sitting in the corner on the ammo bag, throwing grenades for the half of the game without even picking or going on the objective. I'm just trying to show that they kind of have less impact since your primary weapon is a lot more powerful. And those are only some of the examples that show the advantages of low time to kill. Generally, from the community's feedback and from what I've seen personally, Majority of Battlefield 1 players actually enjoyed the update and they prefer the lower TTK rather than the previous state of the game. And I also know that some of you guys watching this video prefer the high TTK and I'm not gonna argue with you. Everyone has their own preferences and as I've said in my previous videos, you cannot always satisfy all groups of players with the same piece of content. But let me know guys what do you enjoy more? low TTK or high TTK? Write down the comment, let me know what my viewers enjoy more. And as always, 
If you enjoyed, remember to leave a like, subscribe and I see you on the battlefield.